Welcome to the Office of Research and Graduate Studies Awards video. I'm Craig McLaughlin, the Associate Vice President for Research and Graduate Studies at Illinois State University. I'm pleased to welcome you to this event in this virtual format where we recognize and honor the work being done on our campus. Our event was originally planned for April of 2020, but the COVID-19 pandemic forced us to postpone it. We hope you enjoy this virtual event where we honor our recipients. Before we begin, I'm pleased to be able to have some remarks from some of the dignitaries at Illinois State University. Since becoming Illinois State University's president in March 2014, the vision and leadership of Dr. Larry Dietz has propelled the institution to new heights of success and prominence. Among numerous accomplishments during his tenure, the university has started a unique cybersecurity major, opened a center for community engagement and service learning, initiated the revitalization of the Bone Student Center, the facility most utilized by local residents, and launched Redbirds Rising, the $150 million campaign to secure a future of scholarship, leadership, and innovation at Illinois State. His leadership has led to a higher level of diversity and strengthened the spirit of inclusiveness on campus. Most recently, he has guided the university through the world's worst health crisis in memory. Dr. Dietz came to Illinois State University in June 2011 as Vice President for Student Affairs and Tenured Associate Professor in the Department of Educational Administration and Foundations. He and his spouse, Marlene, have volunteered their time on a variety of local boards and committees, including Baby Fold Mentoring, the Boys and Girls Club, Red Cross, Children's Discovery Museum, and the March of Dimes. Please welcome the 19th President of Illinois State University, Dr. Larry Dietz. Thank you for that kind introduction, Craig, and good afternoon. Let me begin by congratulating all of our graduate students and faculty award winners. Your talent and commitment are on full display today, and I know the entire university community is very proud of you. I know all of us wish that we could gather together with our honorees in person to offer handshakes and high fives. As the words coronavirus and COVID become part of our lexicon, we are also discovering a new meaning for the words Zoom, mask, and pivot. Let me offer a brief update on the university's coronavirus response plan, Redbird's Return, as we begin the university's 163rd year in a manner like never before. As you may know, most instruction for this semester will be delivered in an online modality with smaller percentages offered in hybrid and in-person modalities. When I think of research at ISU, my mind's eye sees a faculty member and a graduate or even an undergraduate student working in close proximity to each other, creating and advancing knowledge. If that is the case for you this semester, I am sure that you are practicing physical distancing, the use of face coverings, cleaning, and all the protocols associated with in-person teaching and learning. If you are most comfortable with in-person instruction, but are using a hybrid or online modality this semester, I join you in looking forward to the day when our classrooms, laboratories, and studios take on a more normal look. I also want you to know that the university is doing everything in its power to keep our campus community healthy and safe during this world health crisis. Illinois State is aggressively marketing its Redbirds return plan, which includes extensive information on testing, face coverings, physical distancing, cleaning, and many other protocols. That marketing effort extends beyond campus into the greater community and has the endorsement of the Town of Normal leadership. Last Wednesday, the Board of Trustees authorized the financial approval for a company called Reditus to operate two on-campus asymptomatic surveillance testing sites. The University will also operate fixed sites in on-campus locations, conducting about 1,500 tests per week. Faculty and staff members can still obtain free testing at Bloomington's Interstate Center. In keeping the campus safe during the pandemic, the university has spent to date almost $500,000 on cleaning supplies and personal protective equipment. Coupling that with investments in facility adaptations and technology for remote operations and teaching, the total investment today inflates to over $5 million. While Illinois State may be known as a predominantly undergraduate education institution, research is a critical part of our mission, vision, and values of, as a university. Our graduate students ably assist faculty and mentor undergraduates, 
all while taking the lead on their own projects, presentations, and publications. As we finally reflect on our proud past and present, we look forward to a bright future for research at Illinois State through the Illinois Innovation Network, our hub and incubator project, and our makerspace. All of these initiatives make Illinois State a leader in research and in our collaboration with the local community and other hub locations statewide. Again, congratulations to our award winners, whether in person or virtually. Today, you are the pride of Illinois State University, and I commend you on your intellect and your effort. Thank you for your kind attention, and go you Redbirds! Thank you, President Dietz. Provost Andave Tarhule became the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Provost of Illinois State University on July 1st of 2020. His immediate prior administrative appointment was Vice Provost and Dean of the Graduate School at Binghamton University, State University of New York. Before that, he was Executive Associate Dean and Department Chair in the College of Atmospheric and Geographic Sciences at the University of Oklahoma. In these positions, he worked on creating new academic programs, increasing student enrollment, increasing diversity, faculty retention, shared governance, and international partnerships and linkages, amongst other things. A broadly trained physical geographer, Dr. Tarhule has wide-ranging research interests in hydroclimatic variability, droughts, water resources, scarcity, and climate information dissemination and use. He is widely published and very successful in grantsmanship as well. Please welcome Dr. Andave Tarhule. Congratulations to all of our award winners today. Illinois State University has a long history of research, and our efforts have grown significantly in recent years. We recognize that the two activities, teaching and research, are synergistic and mutually reinforcing. Our research informs our teaching and vice versa. We bring the latest research discoveries and findings into the classroom to enrich the education of our students. We work side by side in collaboration and partnership with our students, graduate and undergraduate alike, in the co-production of new knowledge as well as in the dissemination of that knowledge. There is considerable evidence to show that when students are engaged in these activities, they have an overall more authentic and more satisfying educational experience. Illinois State University has recorded impressive accomplishments in the area of research over the past year. In the fall of 2019, we created and launched a new Office of Student Research. That office will support, promote, and celebrate the research and creative activity of our students. As part of its activities, the Office of Student Research made grant awards to students and also organized a student research competition last year. Our external grant applications and awards were also impressive over the past year. ISU received $42.4 million in new grants. This included approximately $38 million in new federal grants, as well as federal pass-through monies from the state, about $2.1 million in new state support, $183,000 from Bloomington Normal Community, and approximately $1.3 million in other foundation support. Some of these grants are multi-year awards, while some have carried over from previous years. These new grants represent about 35% increase over the previous year. To support and strengthen our research infrastructure, we have also made changes to our processes and procedures. For example, the research website was recently revamped after much stakeholder feedback to make it more user-friendly. We continue to streamline and refine our policies and procedures, both to make it easier for our faculty researchers, as well as to meet changing regulations and compliance requirements. We fully expect to continue to invest and expand our research efforts in the coming years. The university has appointed a new Associate Vice President for Research and Graduate Studies, Dr. Craig McLaughlin. 
Dr. McLaughlin will continue to build on the impressive efforts made by Dr. John Bauer. Together with Provost, with the new Provost, Dr. McLaughlin will lead a new university-wide consultative effort to establish new research directions and priorities. That effort will involve identifying impediments that faculty face related to research, as well as our incentives and rewards structures. Illinois State University has researchers that are nationally and internationally renowned. Our researchers are better than or the equivalent of their counterparts anywhere in the world. Our goal is to create an environment that encourages and supports all faculty who wish to engage in research to be the best that they can be. Congratulations again to all of our winners. Thank you, Provost Tarhule. I'm excited for the opportunity to work with you and the campus community on those ambitious plans. Next, I'd like to introduce the Cross Endowed Chair in the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, Dr. Jen Freeberg, to recognize our next awardee. I am pleased to recognize Dr. Anu Gokhale, Distinguished Professor of Technology, as the recipient of the 2020 Dr. John Chismar and Dr. Anthony Ostrowski University-wide Scholarship of Teaching and Learning Award. As a productive SOTL scholar, Dr. Gokhale has focused her work on topics related to high-quality teaching and computer science. She has published dozens of SOTL studies, is a frequent speaker nationally and internationally on topics related to her SOTL work, and is the recipient of over $1 million in grant funding to study various aspects of teaching and learning in her her field of computer science. Dr. Gokhale's SOTL work is a testament to her desire to understand students' learning in order to improve teaching in her discipline. Congratulations, Dr. Gokhale, on this well-deserved recognition. Thank you, Dr. Freeberg. Our next presenter will be the director of the Graduate School, Dr. Noel Selko, who will recognize our Graduate Student Award winners. Thanks, Craig. The Three Minute Thesis is a research communication competition that challenges master's and doctoral students to describe their research topic and its significance in just three minutes to a general audience. This past February, 10 students presented their research after being selected as the top candidates from their respective colleges. Austin Calhoun was awarded the university winner as well as People's Choice walking away with a $1,500 cash prize after winning over the judges and audience on mechanisms behind the decline of bumblebees. Jennifer Woodrum won second place, receiving $500 for her presentation on perfectionism and ruminism, finding the sweet spot of failure. The James L. Fisher Outstanding Thesis Competition is designed to provide recognition of outstanding master's theses. Each college holds its own competition and chooses a master's thesis to forward to the graduate school for review. The top thesis is chosen to represent ISU at the Midwestern Association of Graduate Schools Thesis Competition. The 2020 university winner was Olga Kostryko from the School of Art. Olga's thesis examines German artist Michael Kurzweil's virtual transborder projects Slubford began in 1999 and NOAA America begun 2010. She considers how, with Kurzweil's citizens of the Polish-German border towns of Slubis and Frankfurt, Odor, utilize socially engaged art and bottom-up community development as platforms to build civic engagement and affect tangible change in their communities where conflict had been constant. While Kurzweil's work has received some attention, Olga's research is the first to bring his activities into the scholarly realm. Committee Chair Melissa Johnson states, navigating a large multidisciplinary topic, Olga's original research persuasively argues that by creating community about a community and using art to do so, art imaginative power created the possibility for individuals to transform and sustain social, political, and community issues at the local grassroots level, thus bringing about change that is real and lasting. Runners-up included Joseph Neal from the School of Biological Sciences and Yao Shi from the Department of Technology. Joseph Neal entered ISU's Master's of Science program in Biological Sciences in 2015 after obtaining his Bachelor's of Science in Biology with honors from Virginia Commonwealth University and a Bachelor's of Arts in Music Performance from George Mason University. His Master's of Science research, chaired by Stephen Giuliano, tested hypotheses about how mortality can cause a population to yield more survivors and a greater rate of population growth. One thesis chapter was published in Ecosphere, another 
father is in final review at Ecological Entomology. He received research grants from Sigma Xi, ISU College of Arts and Sciences, and ISU Phi Sigma Society. He is now a PhD student in ecology at Rice University. For Yao Xia, having precise understanding of the strength development progress of concrete in the natural environment helps to save project time and cost. However, the current practice of concrete tasks depend on the published laboratory test data, charts and curves, which would not show the frequently changing environmental conditions happening in the real world. The research objective of Yao's research was to design a reliable and accurate method to validate the test data of the strength developments of concrete specimens in early ages. The approach included the following tasks. Arrange sensors to monitor the temperature data of in-place concrete, record the sensor data automatically, and design the temperature control on a concrete curing device to keep the curing conditions of the specimens the same as what the in-place concrete has. The data collection lasted 40 days and included 84 strength reports for concrete specimens. The findings showed that the modified measurement method of concrete strength is effective and reliable as the management and control system for sample testing and data collection. Committee member Klaus Schmidt was very proud of Yaur's Howd work on this project. The other college winners were Kate Brunk from the Department of Politics and Government and Alyssa Hernandez from the School of Communication. Kate produced an amazing cross-disciplinary master's thesis that had a breadth typical of a doctoral dissertation, while separate empirical chapters for a correlational analysis of a data from a random digit telephone national survey, a novel survey experiment, and a GIS analysis, says committee chair L.J. Ziggerell. Completing her thesis involved her learning how to use multiple platforms and software, such as Stata, R, Prolific, Qualtrics, and ArcGIS. Kate's thesis provided evidence for multiple important substantive findings, such as experimental results that indicated that public support for federal funding for a reproductive health clinic can be influenced by perceived community need for the clinic. Alyssa examined how Hispanic individuals who were sexually assaulted talked to their families about the assault. Cultural and religious forces often persuade them that they are responsible for their assaults, that they should feel shame for the assault, and that being sexually active, although against their wills, brings shame to the family and goes against God. These cultural and religious beliefs play significant roles in how survivors frame, cope with, and communicate with their assault to family members. Although an emotionally challenging topic to study, Alyssa did so with compassion while maintaining academic rigor and producing a strong final product stated by her committee chair, Amy Miller-Ott. The Clarence W. Sorensen Distinguished Dissertation Award recognizes completed dissertations of the highest quality from the previous academic year. Dissertations are nominated by departments and schools for a review by the graduate school. The 2020 winner was Sharika Dickerson from the Department of English. From committee chair Cynthia Huff in subverting autobiography, reading Nakazake Shange's For Colored Girls as Life Narrative to Authorize Black Women's Autobiographical Voices, Sharika Dickerson examines how Shange's core poem and hybrid text functions as a subversive form of life writing that particularly speaks to the intersectional life experiences of Black women, including her own. To complicate her own very rich intersectional writing, Sharika adeptly uses narrative theory, especially Bakken's concept of heteroglossia and Du Bois' concept of double consciousness, as well as the theoretical framework of Black feminist thought. The result is an intensely revealing look at how Shange's characters mirror Sharika's and other Black women's experiences. Thank you, Dr. Selko. I know working alongside student coworkers in research is one of the most rewarding aspects of my own career, so it is wonderful to hear about the great works these researchers have been doing. I am pleased to now recognize the winners of our faculty awards. The Creative Activity Initiative Award goes to Layden Bamani from the Wansuk Kim School of Art. The Research Initiative Award goes to Matthew Alderman from the Department of Technology. Henley Bannock, the Department of Geography, Geology, and the Environment. Jennifer Barnes, the Department of Family and Consumer Sciences. Ashley Farmer, the Department of Criminal Justice Sciences. Daniel Lannan, the Department of Psychology. Alice Lee, the School of Teaching and Learning. 
Teuk Park from the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders. Scott Pierce from the School of Kinesiology and Recreation. And Lindsay Thomas from the School of Communication. Congratulations to all of our winners. Next, we'll recognize the winners of the Outstanding University Creative Activities Awards. Our first award goes to Melissa Oreski of the Wansuk Kim School of Art. My name is Melissa Oreski, and I am a painter. I also make collages, prints, artists' books, video. I curate and organize exhibitions and do occasional experimental art projects. For the last five years, I've been making work using plants as my subject matter. I'm really excited about plants because they are both exquisitely beautiful and totally necessary. So plants aren't just the image matter for my work. I actually try and imagine how they grow, um, how they absorb, reflect, filter light, how they produce color, um, and how they exist as living beings in time. So I'm actually trying to model my studio practice on plants. I'm trying to paint in a plant-like way. I think creative activity allows us to be producers, not just receivers of information. So we're not just getting our media and our knowledge and our culture from outside, but we're actually creating it here and contributing it back into our experience in our world. As a faculty member, I have to walk the walk. I have to practice what I'm teaching my students so the knowledge I'm giving them isn't just theoretical. They need to learn how to be artists in the world and how to think through questions materially and through their own research and art making practices. I really appreciate the kind of interdisciplinary environment that ISU offers and I really appreciate the encouragement and support of my colleagues in offering me this recognition. I've been able to do projects that collaborate with colleagues in the library, in biology, in history, in philosophy, and in use those kinds of connections to directly inform my practice as an artist. Our second recipient is Carl Schimmel from the School of Music. As a professor, of course, um, I can say that there are, you know, there are various ways you can explore the art of music. My particular angle as a composer is to explore music as an art form in a creative way. I find that uh, in teaching music, whether it's to undergraduates in the theory curriculum or, of course, to our composition students, um, I think that exploring how music can express both emotion or other uh, types of um, modes of understanding is something that uh, I think that it's helpful to explore those avenues in a creative way. In my own creative work, um, it gives me some insight as to how uh, I can convey musical understanding to our students. In recent years, I've received a few um, major awards or re recognition for my work, so those would include the Guggenheim Fellowship, um, a, an American Academy of Arts and Letters Award, and a commission from the Fromm Foundation, which is at Harvard University. Recent interests of mine include um, exploring narrative in music in particular. For example, I've been using poetry and literature as inspiration and then using sort of the formal characteristics of the poetry and, and the novels um, to generate form in music. I, I try to teach from, from the perspective of um, you know, a, a listener who's in, in, interested in their work and genuinely engaged in what they have to say. I try to um, take my understanding of how narrative is expressed through music and then um, it help, I try to have that inform the comments that I give the students in the lesson. Our next set of awards are the Outstanding University Researchers. Our first recipient is Andrew Hartman from the Department of History. I'm a historian of the United States. My focus has been mostly on the 20th century. Um, I focus mostly on intellectual history. I um, have won two Fulbright awards. Uh, the first one was 2014-15. Um, I spent 
uh, a year teaching at the University of Southern Denmark on a Fulbright. And then my most recent, um, in the spring of 2019, I spent six months uh, doing research at the British Library on a Fulbright. Because I do intellectual history, one of the things I'm constantly thinking about is what is history? And that's like one of the most important or crucial questions that I want my students to ask themselves and to eventually ask their students. So I want my students to understand that history is constructed. Um, and so historians actually sit down through their research and build the past or build a narrative about the past um, that we then read, we debate, we analyze, we think about, and then we build our own narratives or construct our own narratives. That's what history is. That's what I want my students to do in the classroom. And really, that's the research project that I'm involved in. The higher up the sort of we get in terms of um, education, so at the university level, I think the people who teach um, should be active researchers. There's a synergy there between research and teaching. For me especially, it's the case because I'm teaching um, future high school history teachers, and one of the missions of our program is to create scholar teachers, to create people who are constantly learning, constantly researching. I really have grown to love working and teaching at ISU and a lot of that has to do with the support that I've been given to do the research that um, I want to do. Our next awardee is John Sedbrook from the School of Biological Sciences. For a number of years now, uh, my team, our research lab, and colleagues and I have been uh, developing uh, crops to be used for generating liquid biofuels. Why we're so um, keen on uh, developing these, uh, these environmentally friendly, sustainable liquid biofuels is uh, jet planes, for example. You cannot run uh, jets on, on uh, batteries. Uh, just in the United States alone, com commercial a aviation uses 12 billion gallons of uh, fuel per year. With the new uh, technology we have and being able to very rapidly make genetic changes using CRISPR gene editing, for example, within a matter of just a, a handful of years here, we've been able to take a weed and uh, we're on the cusp of uh, commercializing this into a crop that could be producing uh, upwards of three billion gallons of uh, oil per year. The students that I get in my lab are really uh, top shelf uh, students, the quality of work they do, you know, this award and this recognition would not have been possible for all their hard work. There's this, this misthinking that research and education are separate. They're really one and the same. The things you see in the textbook, the things I teach in the classroom, we're uh, actually working on in the laboratory. And the goal is the things that we discover in the laboratory will end up in textbooks. And uh, uh, so really that's the exciting aspect of this job is doing things that nobody's done before and uh, you know pushing the envelope in terms of our knowledge and what we can do with that knowledge in terms of uh, bettering humanity. There are a lot of different places I could have gone and gotten a job, but I see Illinois State University as being an excellent environment. I'm very fortunate to uh, Illinois State and in particular School of Biological Sciences for being so supportive of the work we do because it's really so beneficial to, to students. Congratulations to all of our faculty awardees. Let's take a look at some of the awards and recognitions that have happened previously this year.
Congratulations to all of our award winners. Thank you so much for joining and watching and attending this evening. I wanna thank our presenters, and I wanna thank those behind the scenes who helped make it happen, Eric Bernjen, Tracy Wittergren, Hugh Sullivan, and Andy Savage. I really appreciate you joining us. We look forward to another great year of research and creative activity at Illinois State University, and hopefully we'll be doing this in person next year. Thank you so much, take care, and stay safe.